This is a production of Cornell University. So next year, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my efforts to breed for disease resistance in Northeast Adapted Tomato. But today, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about uh, an experiment that I did to evaluate some of our insect-resistant tomato lines against this guy right here, the Western flower thrip. So the Western flower thrip causes damage to tomato um, both directly and indirectly. And directly, it's done by sucking out cell contents and by inserting eggs into the epidermis of um, the leaf and stem tissue, and that's called oviposition. It also causes indirect damage by transmitting viruses, such as the tomato spotted wilt virus seen there. And traditionally, that system is managed by um, insecticides, but there could be an alternative. So acyl sugars are foliar secondary metabolites, they're insect resistant metabolites, and they're accumulated in particularly high quantities by wild species in the Solanaceae. So here we see some type four trichomes with droplets full of acyl sugars. And the acyl sugar phenotype of a plant is defined by two primary parameters. So the first one is the aggregate amount of all of the different types of acyl sugar. And the second is the chemotype or the different structures or chemical components that make up the acyl sugars. And the chemotype uh, can be quite diverse in tomato. Uh, there can be a monosaccharide or a disaccharide sugar base. There can be three to four attached fatty acids. And those fatty acids can be attached in different spatial orientations. They can be of different lengths, and they can be branched differently. Luckily for me, um, Martha and John had recently created a number of inbred tomato lines that varied both the amount and chemotype in tomato, which allowed me to test a few hypotheses. So I wanted to know, do foliar acyl sugars impact thrips over position rates? and tospovirus inoculation rates? If so, is there variation for that insect resistance phenotype, just as there's variation for the acyl sugar plant phenotype? And can some of that variation be attributed to either the amount of acyl sugar or the chemotype of the acyl sugars or some combination of both? So to do that, I did an insect choice assay. So a Western flower thrip was exposed to two leaf discs. And these leaf discs were from the same leaf, from the same plant, treated identically in every way, except that one was washed with water. And that temporarily removes the foliar exudates uh, by about 75%, allowing me to test presence absence of acyl sugars. In a separate dimension, looking at differences among genotypes, we have Celebrity and M82, which were included in the experiment. These are commercial tomato controls. They accumulate only trace acyl sugars. We have C071026, which is our acyl sugar benchmark breeding line. It accumulates about 15% the level of acyl sugar of Solanum penellii, LA716. We also have lines that have acyl sugar level QTL that modify the amount of acyl sugar. We have lines that modify the chemotype of acyl sugars. And importantly, we have a fatty acid 5 line. And this line has a chemotype modulating QTL, but it also has a pyotropic interaction with the acyl sugar level that causes it to have a level that's very low, like Celebrity and M82, which gives us a very powerful and closely related control to the rest of the material here. So here I am setting up the, um, the insect galleries. Uh, the two leaves, washed and unwashed, they're set in auger so that the insect can only interact with one side of the leaf disc. Then 10 female flower thrips, 10 female Western flower thrips are inserted into the center of the gallery and they're allowed to feed and oviposit uh, for about 24 hours, after which point the leaf is stained with McBride solution, destained with lactic acid, and then under the microscope I can count the eggs. So here's one and two in this, um, in this leaf disc. And what we find is that the probability that a leaf or that a, that a Western flower thrip oviposits into the washed leaf disc which is reduced in acyl sugar, as opposed to the probability that it oviposits into the unwashed acyl sugar intact leaf disc is significantly different for every single line in my experiment. And so it shows the effect of removal of foliar exudates, at least temporarily. But importantly, the magnitude of that difference varies across genotypes. And so if I'm to take this plot and just kind of clean it up a little bit by just looking at the unwashed leaf discs side by side by genotype, we see that same distribution, but it's more clear to see that some of the lines, like fatty acid 7 and acyl sugar 610, uh, did particularly well in reducing the probability of overposition, especially when considered or when compared to the commercial tomato controls 
and our closely related breeding line, which has low acyl sugar level, the fatty acid five line. Now we did the same thing for tospavirus inoculation, except this time the thrips were infected with TSWV, and then we did ELISA at the end to, uh, to count the incidence of um, infection. And we see a very similar trend where again, fatty acid seven and the acyl sugar 610 line are among the best performing lines. But importantly, you see quite a bit of additional variation uh, in this experiment as opposed to this experiment. And part of that is due to uh, differences in the number of replicates. But I also hypothesize that um, the, the amount of inputs that go into the decision behind oviposition may be greater than for tospovirus, or, or excuse me, than for feeding, because there are real ramifications for the survival of your offspring uh, in deciding where to put your eggs, as opposed to where to just try and feed at a, at a spot. So if you don't like that spot, you can just move on to the next spot. Uh, and I think that maybe there might be a, a, a connection between the difference in the levity of those decisions and the variation seen in these experiments. Um, we also see that among the high acyl sugar producing lines, there's still quite a bit of variation in insect response. And so you could ask the question, well, is that variation due to the acyl sugar level or due to changes in acyl sugar chemotype? And I should remind you that these lines here, although they have QTL that modify chemotype, there's also pleiotropic interactions between those QTL and the acyl sugar level or amount phenotype, which allows us to do a logistic regression for the probability of oviposition against the average acyl sugar level of a line. And what we see is that as the acyl sugar level increases for a line, the probability that a thrip lays its egg in the unwashed leaf, so that's the leaf with the acyl sugar in it, goes down significantly, almost to zero. And the opposite is true for the wash leaf disc. We see a very similar trend for TSWV inocul inoculation, uh, where the probability of infection in the unwashed leaf disc drops from about 60%, again, to about 1% to 2%. But you could also ask the question, well, what about the chemotype? We have all of these fatty acids that we've measured some of which are correlated, some of which are negatively correlated or uncorrelated. Do any of these have an impact in insect uh, damaging behaviors? And unfortunately, because of the aforementioned pleiotropic interactions between the QTL, there's no way to experimentally isolate the changes in chemotype. But we can still build a model to try and make some educated guesses as to what might be going on in the background. Uh, and that's exactly what I've done here. So I used Minimum AIC variable or minimum AIC model selection criterion and a uh, Bayesian statistical framework called Firth uh, bias reduced maximum likelihood estimation to and to and I also used a um, a forward stepwise variable selection to identify um, my predictors from a pool of predictors that best described overposition rates and that pool of predictors included the overall aggregate amount of basal sugar the amount of acyl sucrose versus acyl glucose, and the amount of all of the different individual quantitative fatty acids. And when you do that, interestingly, it doesn't give you a model that shows acyl sugar level or amount, but it gives you a model that shows two of the individual fatty acid predictors as most explanatory. So that's a straight chain C12 molecule and an isobranched uh, four carbon molecule. For TSWV inoculation, we again find that a fatty acid is most explanatory, and that fatty acid is the straight chain 10 carbon molecule, which is highly correlated to the 12 carbon molecule, seen as the, um, as the most significant variable in the first model. So in essence, these models are showing fairly similar things. And so what have we learned? Well, we learned that there are differences among lines for insect overposition and transmission. Um, we learned that um, in some cases, lines do particularly well at reducing the incidence of tomato spotted wilt virus or overposition. We learned that some of the variation among these lines can be attributable to the amount of acyl sugar that a line has, but we can do a better job of describing and possibly predicting uh, the insect response by including chemotype or the amounts of particular chemotypes. And we can use that information to guide our breeding efforts to produce insect resistant acyl sugar lines uh, for the field. And with that, I'd like to thank um, 
Dr. Sule Ben Mahmood and Dr. Diane Ullman at UC Davis are my old bosses. They helped a lot with the design and implementation of this experiment. I'd like to thank uh, Tom Chapel at Texas A&M for independently replicating my uh, model using SAS. And I'd like to thank uh, the Muchley, Muchley Lab for um, supporting me and for showing me how to do the chemical analysis in tomato. All right, thank you very much. Any questions for Taylor, Mark? Yeah, Taylor, um, if you don't give them a choice, will they go ahead and oviposit or not? You don't give them a choice. Yeah, you only put in the uh, uh, only put in the leaf disc with the with the uh, trifold. Um, so I did I did a background experiment where I gave them two leaf discs with um, what with, that were both unwashed, so they were as is, and they were of tomato, so they don't produce a whole lot of acyl sugar. Um, and in that case, the split was 50-50 for overposition. They did overposit into it. Does that answer your question? That was on a celebrity variety? That was on celebrity, yeah. Uh, what about if you use uh, two of your uh, hazel sugar lines? And, and yeah, I didn't test that. I was just more testing for aggregation preference. So if like one was saying, hey, come over here, this leaf is better. And then there was basically an effect for one of the leaves uh, spatially as opposed to do the hazel sugar. So I didn't test that specifically. Yes. Sorry. Does the fact that it can be washed up with water imply that um, rain just completely wipes out the ability for them to resist? It does. Um, it knocks it off by about 75%, but the acyl sugars come back. So you can see here actually uh, something that you can't see in this case, because this is a binary random variable. Here we have two binary random variables where both leaves can be infected, both uninfected, or one or the other. And you see actually that the difference is or that they trend together. And so what this means to me is we actually let them feed for too long. So we let them feed for 24 hours. And what it looks like is for a period of time, the washed leaves were more attractive, but then the acyl sugars came back. And then you see that trend again with acyl sugar level, which if they were completely removed permanently, you wouldn't see. That would just be a flat line along the top. Yes. Uh, how was the water applied? A gentle sprinkle? It was with a Nalgene bottle. The uh, tip was cut off, so it was wider. And so why was like that a, done? Why was that done? Um, we got just a little sprinkle of water. Oh, because you have, you have to be fairly vigorous to knock the acyl sugars off. Exactly. Essentially. Yeah. So actually, a rain, unless you're talking about tropical storm, is not going to be removing it. Yeah. It's the power. Any other questions? All right. Well, let's thank Taylor then. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.